we want to know the maximum bending stress and the maximum transverse shear stress anywhere in the beam. So along the length of the beam and along the height of the beam, what's the most tensile stress we have, compressive normal stress, and maximum transverse shear stress that we see. So to do that, we already have the VM diagram made. These values here. So this is all we need to really carry with us into this next part. So again, those maximum compressive, tensile, and shear stresses anywhere in the beam. And what we'll keep is that our maximum V was 1,900 pounds, our maximum M value, 45, 13 pound-feet, and our minimum was zero. Okay. To find the stresses, we need to use MY over I, VQ over IB. So in both cases, we need to find the value of I, the moment of inertia for the shape. So that's probably the best place to start so we can use it for the next two parts of the problem. All right, so this T-shaped beam, I can split into two rectangles. Shape number one is going to be three inches by six inches, or 18 square inches. Shape two is also three inches by six inches. If I place my coordinate system at the bottom of my beam here, what I'm first looking for is where is that neutral axis located? which again, the neutral axis passes through the centroid of my beam. So for the Y tildes, I want to know for each of the shapes, where does its centroid lie with respect to that origin that I just placed at the bottom of my beam. For shape number one, it's going to be 1.5 inches from the bottom of the shape plus 6 inches <coughs> to the x-axis is going to give us 7.5 inches above the x-axis. And shape two, half of its height is three. So that I can take the product of A and Y, get 135 and 54 will be 189 inches to the third power. which I then use to find y bar. That's y bar. Again, that's where the neutral axis is located also in my shape, 5.25 inches above the bottom of the shape. So for shape one and two, I want to find its moment of inertia around its own centroid. And they're all rectangles, so I use the BH cubed over 12 uh, formula. It has a height of three. It has a height of six. So its moment of inertia will be six times three cubed over 12. So shape number one is going to have a moment of inertia of 13.5. Inches to the fourth power. And shape number two will be three times six to the third power over two. Larger moment of inertia, uh, 54. So if we add those together, we get 67.5. Right. Then for D, that's the distance between the Y tilde for each shape and the Y bar for the entire shape. Uh, for both of them, we get 2.25. Last step is AD squared. So it's going to be 18 times 2.25 squared. It'll actually be the same value for both of these. We get 91.1. Uh, And we add that together to get 182.2. So the total inertia for my cross section will be 67.5 plus 182.2, which is going to be about 250 inches to the fourth power.
Uh, so all of this was justifying the moment of inertia of this uh, cross-section, this T-shaped cross-section. Now I have almost enough information to find my bending stress, my maximum minimum bending stress, or my most compressive, most tensile bending stress, and my shear stress. So I can start with my bending stress. Again, what I was looking for is for anywhere in the beam, uh, at any height, any length, where is my most compressive stress going to be? Where is, what is my most tensile stress going to be in terms of bending? So I need, to I need to check where my moment is the most positive and where it's the most minimum, the top and the bottom of the beam at each of those points. So really, because one of them is zero, I'm just going to get zeros, but this is, it would be the same process. Uh, we want to take both ways. So first, where M is maximum, it's going to be 45, 13 pound feet. So I first want to check at the top. I can calculate the stress there. It will be 45.15. And at the top of the beam, the value of y, I'm looking up here, is going to be the distance between this point and my neutral axis. So at the top of my beam, that value of y is going to be 9 inches minus the 5.25. I divide that by the i that I just found of 250. This is in inches to the fourth power, but this is in pound feet. So we need to either put everything in feet or everything in inches. So it's probably going to be easier to convert the 45, 13 pound feet into pound inches. So we want to convert from feet to inches. So we have to multiply this by 12 inches per foot. So now the feet on this cancels with the feet down here. I have inches squared on the top. I have inches to the fourth on the bottom. Now I have everything in the correct units. So now my answer is going to be in pounds per square inch or PSI. So at the top of the beam, I get negative 813 PSI. So at this point, the top of the beam is in compression, 813 PSI. Now I want to check what at the bottom is the stress. Well, the M is the same. It's still the positive 4513, which I know I have to multiply by 12. But the bottom of the beam, my Y value is different. Because now I'm looking down here. It's going to be, from the neutral axis, down 5.25 inches. So it's going to be a negative. 5.25 for my value of y. The i value is the same. Okay, so this is now in pound inches. This is in inches, inches to the fourth. This is negative and negative, so I get a positive value down here. So down here, the stress is a positive uh, 1,140 PSI which means it's in tension at the bottom. Again, in general, this is only two of the four steps. I have one <coughs> compressive load. I have one, tens or one compressive stress, one tensile stress. So I need to kind of put them aside, and then I do the same thing, evaluating the top and the bottom of the beam at the most negative value of M, which in this case is going to be simple because it's zero, which means that this becomes zero, which means this becomes zero. So alternatively, I get zero PSI and zero PSI. So these are the four values I find when I look at uh, M max and M min, each of them at the top and the bottom. 
So now of these four choices, I have to find which of the four is the most compressive. Well, that's the negative 813. Which of the four is the most tensile? That's the 1140 PSI. So in this case, I have to compare. But normally what would happen is this is compressive here, but when I switch the sign of M, this would be a tensile normally, and then this would become a compressive. So really what I'm comparing is this value and this value, which is more negative, and then this value and this value, which is more positive. Because again, the sign of Y switches between top and bottom, and the sign of M will switch between the maximum and the minimum value there. So those are the four things I compare. So those would be my answers for the most compressive stress, 813 PSI, the most tensile, 1140 PSI, anywhere in the beam. The V, I already know, the most, uh, the absolute maximum value of V was 1900. Here, I don't care if it's positive or negative, whatever the absolute max is is what I want to use if I'm looking for the maximum shear stress anywhere in the beam. I, I know from the calculation I just erased. So Q and B are what I need to calculate. Because I'm looking for the maximum shear stress, I know that that's going to occur at the neutral axis. So for my mini shape, I can keep everything above or below the neutral axis for this drawing. In this case, if I keep everything below, it's just going to be a rectangle. So that's going to be easier to deal with. So this is the mini shape that I'm dealing with. It's only 5.25 inches high, since that's where the neutral axis was, and 3 inches wide. So my Q value will be A prime times Y bar. A prime is the area of this mini shape is going to be 3 times 5.25. And Y bar is the distance between the centroid of the mini shape and the neutral axis of my entire figure, which in this case, because this is a rectangle, it's going to be 5.25 over 2. So my Q value for this, I get 41.3 inches to the third power. And also for my mini shape, I can see the length of material I actually cut through was three inches worth of material. So that gives me my B value also from this mini shape. Right, putting this all together then, I have 1,900 pounds times Q of 41.3 inches to the third power over 250 inches to the fourth times three inches. So I have inches to the third over inches to the fifth gives me 1 over inches squared. I have a pounds on top, so this will give me PSI. The maximum shear stress, transverse shear stress I have, 105 PSI. 